Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Today we're back here with Kill Count, and tonight, well, with the strike still going on, it's time for James to branch out to all of horror media. Today, it's the web series Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. <laughs> and yes, I know, I gotta re react to this, but hmm, I'll find some time. Anyway, might as well just take a look back and see how many people actually died. Though, remember, this is the web series, not the TV show, so. Actually, what the cow? Anyway, let's see how many bodies were in the web series, huh? Be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoyed. Let's go! Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally hey, up James. the victims and hey. all our favorite, uh... Horror media. How about that? Well, I don't know, man. We are in uncharted territories here with the SAG strike. But hey, we're trying new shit, which is why we're looking at Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, a British YouTube series consisting of six episodes, most of them released from 2014 to 16. We've covered a couple web series hey, before, see. like Crypt TV's Look See and Sunny Family Cult, but those were both more or less straightforward horror stories, as weird as Look See could get sometimes. Oh, and uh, the, by the way, you know, bitch, you never caught me! <laughs> in contrast, <laughs> Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is its own fucking thing. Thing entirely. On the surface, yeah, it's a rip much. on kids' TV shows where each episode has a lesson, only they all end up getting dark and weird. With that premise, it'd be easy to have le random humor. But Don't Hug Me's weirdness is inspired, and the darkness yeah, has a point. The show doesn't give explicit things. answers for what it's about, but you'll get the gist of it at least, and diving deeper rewards you with a solid and ultimately satisfying story. At least, that's how I felt after watching Matt Pat's that. film theory videos about it. He did a great two-parter on the web series that shed light on what it means. Chelsea and I have always been fans of Don't Hug Me. We were quoting it back on our old show, Drunk Disney. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! It's just got so much thought Don't and care me. put into it through and through. The production design is incredible, with everything handmade and bespoke for the show. That comes courtesy of creators Becky Sloan and Joseph Pelling, two Brits who just won a production design BAFTA for the follow-up Don't Hug Me TV series on the BBC, which I haven't had the chance to watch yet. They met at Kingston Better. University. Sloan was a fine arts student, making big physical props, while Pelling was an animation student, alongside Baker Terry, who does most of the voice acting, and who co-wrote wrote all the episodes after the first one. Thanks to their combined expertises, Don't Hug Me has amazing practical puppet effects and various types of animation as the situation calls. Hell, it even winds up in a more traditional real-world setting. And throughout all the turns it takes, it delivers one seriously catchy song after another. The show has constant surprises, so I definitely recommend you take 33 minutes and watch the whole series before you watch this video. It's truly a work of art. A creative work of art. Let's see how many things die in it. Here we go. Nothing else, let's go. The series First begins up. with an episode released as Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared 12 years ago in summer 2011. We're in a prop-filled kitchen where three friends sit at a table. Red guy, yellow guy, and duck. They're good lads. A sketchbook flips open and starts singing at them about how to live deliciously or creatively. At first, the lesson's a hard sell for these guys. I use my head to express myself. That sounds pretty boring. I use my head to express myself. But they keep at it, and soon they're seeing clouds of past kill counts, like Cujo, Frogs, and, uh, uh Scream 6, maybe? Oh, wow. Unfortunately for Yellow Guy, the most childlike of the gang, he seems to be doing creative things all wrong. Green! Green is not a creative color. It's only the first yeah. sign something's amiss. The second is when they flip into tune mode and reveal a film Whoa. set behind them, ushering in a montage of madness that sees a glitter heart and the longest mullet I've ever seen on Yellow Guy. Looking like Marge Simpson with her hair down. Yeah. This experimental jazz as infused acid trip ends with the sketch pad all creative doubt. Now that's all agreed. To never, never be, be creative, creative again. again. And you know what? Fuck it! Let's put Sketchpad on the count. The rules for this one are that there are no rules. I mean, the little Pretty lady much. said she was donezo, then flopped back and folded. Toss her in the recycling bin. So yeah, that was the first episode. Pretty weird. We had a sketchbook, voiced by co-creator Becky Sloan, teaching that creativity can be done a right and a wrong way. Not the usual message yeah, for kids. Like and said, damn, did my surprised. blood run cold when she calmly though. clapped back at yeah, Red Guy. I use my head to express myself. It's the one and only Deagle Double G. Nope. The short was made by Sloan and Pelling under their artist collective, This Is It. There's a video by them on their channel, predating Don't Hug Me, called Bad Things That Could Happen. It features a lot of the same kind of practical puppetry depicting dark situations with a wry sense of humor. Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, retroactively called Creativity, became popular online, so they pursued their original idea of making it a series. The second episode was supported by Random Axe, a public arts fund by the UK's Channel 4. Sloan and Pelling turned down offers 
offers of more money from bigger companies, so they could keep making the show exactly the way they wanted to, which is awesome. Episode 2 came out two and a half years later in January 2014. Now the bros are in the living room, apparently on the same day, June 19th. It's a whole fucking thing. Red Guy and Duck yeah. look more or less the same, but let me tell you, time and budget were good to Yellow Guy. Speaking of time, that's what this episode's all about. There's always time for a song. What? Who is that? It's Tony the Talking Clock, voiced by Baker Terry, who also voices Duck and Yellow Guy, as well as a whole bunch of other characters who will we'll talk and sing later. songs at us. Tony starts singing about time, and the lyrics quickly hint towards its decomposing qualities. Scrub, scrub, scrub till the world is brown. The seriousness of time's never-ending march moves Tony so much, he starts singing like a South Park character. Let's go on a journey, a journey through all time. He gives them a history lesson, with a strange fixation on cobbles, and then things head out to the woods to get weirder. Tony starts being even meaner than that sketch pad, and we meet Yellow Guy's creepy ass dad named Roy. Aw, wanna dip his little nose in some ranch and eat it up. Except, uh, never mind. We're not sure if that'd be ranch. Tony would rather talk about fishes and his stupid face than let Duck try to figure out the true nature of time. Maybe time's just a construct of human perception, an illusion created by. <laughs> You broke yellow guy. Damn it, Tony. Actually, he really broke it. It makes him and his friends age like they were put in a temporal microwave. It it's stop. honestly disturbing. Make it stop. Uh, it's out of my hands. I'm only a clock. Don't worry. I'm sure you'll be fine. But eventually, everyone runs out of time. Hell of a kids TV show these guys are running. When this second video also proved successful, a Kickstarter was launched to make a full series, series with the goal of raising about 100,000 quid. The campaign promised a show that would answer life's questions like where do dogs live? And why is this pillowcase full of ham? I like that Sloan and Pelling lend their sense of humor to so much of what they do. To support the Kickstarter, they released two terrifying analog horror ransom videos. If you're watching this, then we need your help. Then on the Kickstarter's behind the scenes featurette, they included repetitive use of crafting b-roll that eventually gets painful, and more inaccurate descriptions of the show. Don't Tell Me I'm Scared is about three best friends who go on an adventure to find a magic pirate ship and save the day. It even had no, sketches of and voice recording sessions for completely non-existent characters. I love it. The Kickstarter su Yeah, I guess what, you know, don't hug me, I'm scared. You're not sure what the heck is going on. <laughs> And also, I think the series, I think that was for the TV show or something. Like I said, they do get a TV show, which actually is on Channel 4. But they can actually search out the TV show. It should be on YouTube. Uh, one second. I remember it. Here we go. Let's drag it down. Oh, uh, yeah, there's actually a full, like, playthrough of it all. It's like two hours. God damn. Wait, and we already have a season two? God damn. That's fast. Or maybe it's just the same season. I don't know. I'll have to look at the pair and we'll see. <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, like I said, the TV show's on YouTube. Go check it out. Anyway, back to it. Succeeded, and episode three was released eight months Perfect. later in October of 2014. The guys are in the great outdoors, and so also possibly missing, to. according to that sign. Maybe they're just yeah. trying to get away from all the weirdos in their house and enjoy this delicious chicken picnic. Duck's a that little protective raw. of that chicknick. Pesky and, bee. and sure, we'll add a cartoon butterfly to the kill count. Why the hell not? Little. Yellow guy's an empath, so he runs crying up a tree. He's found by Shrignold, another pesky bee. A little baby, baby pigeon. pigeon. Uh, okay, I have some questions. Too late to ask him though, because this butterfly is <laughs> yeah, already singing about story. love, the topic of episode three. It's a nice, peaceful song that feels less menacing than the first two, but don't worry, yeah, it'll get, get there soon minute. enough Let's after see. things get animated in a psychedelic summer of love style. Yellow guy learns about love from Shrignold and all his friends, including. <gasps> Cloudy? They love everything about Cloudy? Yellow Guy. His look, his voice, his touch. <laughs> Harder. Yellow Guy's eager to love, but eventually gets a bit too Brick Tamlin about it. I love this tree, and I love this stick, and I love no, this No, 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 that's not how it's done. They tell her, the Yeller feller, that he needs somebody to love. Fine. And it won't be his friends, since they're too busy eating bloody eggs and raw chicken that has flies on it. Mm. The talk of Yellow Guy's special ones starts sounding religious and then outright culty when they 
they reveal their idol, hey, Malcolm, the king of laughs. Thing. And they're gonna feed uh, Malcolm the yellow guy? Oh, no, just gravel? Oh, well, that's not bad. The king's cult does involve a name change and some brain scrubbing, though, so even with the promise of a special one, it's all too much for yellow guy. He snaps out of it and is found by his friends, who do love him after all. We've bought you the last boiled egg to cheer you up. But then oh, history you. repeats itself when the egg hatches and Duck swats that larva to but death. Pesky bee. Again. This episode's credits feature King Malcolm getting the full Wicker Man treatment. No doubt the creators thought of that classic British horror film when they You're were like, writing this episode featuring a cult. Episode 4, which has always been my favorite, was released after a five month gap in spring of 2015. The boys are in what looks to be a game room with lots of fun things to distract them from looking at that picture Again. of Yellow Guy and his dad. Their game asks oh, them a real brain the buster, but instead of learning the answer from a globe, the analog world hey, gets nope. invaded by a computer. Stop all the Downloading. This clever computer boy can tell them everything, except what they want to know. It knows all about yeah. numbers and oats, especially oats, must have a fiber connection. This computer yeah. won't stand for younger models either. It's here to steamroll these consumers with a bunch of personal questions. And don't you dare try to interrupt. Shut uh, up. Don't touch me. What? Turns out oh, touching that board's the key to an existential meltdown, ah. red guy. The characters glitch into the computer's digital home, a sometimes nauseating place. Wow. <laughs> the PC assures them they're still real, they're just controlling digital avatars. Good luck teaching them VR one day. Though they initially came here seeking specific knowledge, the guys are told that they can only do three things in this digital world. Look at various infographs, dress up in digital style, or go out digital dancing, which hey, it is fun. Still, three content streams doesn't seem like good business, especially when one of them runs out of content right away. The doom scrolling becomes too much for real world red guy, who tries to control all the lead his way out of there, all while Roy creepily watches from the corner. What the fuck, Roy, since when is this hereditary? Red Guy follows a cord coming out the back of the computer, and it leads him into a room that gives me nightmares. It's a lo-fi version of their show, and that puppeteer was not expecting him. It's enough to blow Red Guy's mind, which I'll count as a kill. I mean, the guy's head blew up. I gotta count it. Besides, well, counting it makes we'll sense when the next episode but starts and he's not there. Episode 5 came out after another six months in October of 2015. Duck and Yellow Guy are in their kitchen again, but it's way bigger yeah. And more stocked than it was in episode one. Yellow guy notices too. Something's different. Then again, he might just be talking about Red Guy's absence, which Duck notes as well when a picture on their fridge changes. Oh. Uh, that can't be good. Before they can yeah, ponder no. where their trace amigo is, their kitchen items break into an unsophisticated song. Do, 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 do. Lots of people get hungry. Who's that on drums? Is that a bread boy? I'm a bread boy. Boy. Ha, I thought so. Boy. The can, the bread, and this big ass steak mofo start jabbing <laughs> forks at him and singing the praises of healthy foods. Well, healthy foods when they're really yeah. It's really hard to pick a favorite song in the series. I think my number one is still computer, but let me tell you, this one's been sneaking up on me. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do it healthy. I especially like the funky keyboard that gets real low. What's that? A tasty snack. You don't want to go and eat a snack like that. And the steak and spinach can have my favorite voices from Terry and Sloan. Fair. The song and dance gets interrupted by a red phone ringing, and it ain't Khrushchev calling about the bomb. Duck answers it Hello? and starts waking up like he were in a Philip K. Duck story. Something's wrong. It makes him uninterested in the menacing foods with their clumsy metaphors and their springy food or regular tetradecagon. The song takes it to the fridge, and it's enough to make Duck snap. He knocks over the camera and tries to escape the show, only to wind up captured and learning that the show must go on. The kitchen objects tell Yellow Guy to eschew the pie and white sauce. Try this canned food. He won't know that it's his friend Duck being torn apart and eaten by a giant can. Duck's been canned from the show and canned his food. Should that be in the microwave? When this late- Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell that Roy is definitely like ramping up like the, uh, you know, his influence around here. Considering like a lot of stuff that is supposedly healthy. Roy's. Like, hold on, just showing this real fast. And, well, you can tell from the juice right there, they're his. Basically, corporate takeover of kids' education. See what I mean? Ay -ay -ay. Anyway. The song ends, it looks like Yellow Guy's been forced to eat duck, holy shit. Wow. Before the episode ends, the phone rings again, and the credits suggest it's the Red Guy calling his friends from his freedom his outside of the show's studio. The grand finale took eight months to arrive, well, dropping in 2016 on, naturally, June 19th. By now, Yellow Guy's all alone, crying about his friends. Good night, guys. 
Poor yellow I guy. I miss you. Wow, that is sad. He tries to sleep the sadness away, but his desk lamp won't let him be. It wants to sing about dreams, no. beginning the final nightmare for yellow like, guy. Well, it's know. the worst know. song, intentionally, no. with yellow guy wailing while crude animation plays. Oh. You could have a dream about riding oh. a horse. No. And yellow guy can't escape it, not even after he wakes up. As the lamp taunts him, he drowns in oil in his bed, and I'll add him to our yeah. weird ass kill Just count. After that, the We're series shifts yet. into widescreen with the real world. We're at work with the red guy, whose or monotonous speech is revealed to be a staple of red guys everywhere. Can you file these files, please? In fact, red guy seems to be the most creative one of the bunch. I am a file, and you put documents in me, and, um... A do 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 a file. Red Guy's memorable monotone <laughs> comes from co-creator Joe Pellet, who also voiced the clever smart computer -y guy. Red Guy's peers poo-poo his silly billy thoughts without a yeah, ballyhoo so among them. Boring. And when he tackles an open mic night with a rendition of the first episode's creative song, they damn near start a riot. I don't I like it. it. It's really it's not good. good. The only one who doesn't boo him is Roy, sitting in the back. That's when Red Guy starts seeing himself in a creative world again. Or actually, for the first time, if you agree with Matt Pat's theory that this real world stuff is the start of things chronologically. Yeah, the theory goes that Red Guy was someone who wanted to do something creative, only to be told no by everyone around him. Roy saw this and agreed to fund a kids TV show for Red Guy, as long as his son could be a part of it. But gradually, Roy let commercial interests take over, until Red Guy left the show out of frustration and the whole thing fell apart. I know it's just a theory, a film theory, theory but it's a solid are. one. I recommend MatPat's videos hmm. to hear the whole thing. Right now, Red Guy's confronting the bastardized version of his dream. Dream TV show. He tries to save Yellow Guy, only to take him down a path of traumatic oh, memories. You made me die! Yeah, not quite, Yellow Guy. I didn't count you in the you time episode. That. After a cavalcade of the series' sinister antagonists, new faces jump in and out, and the place starts sounding like TMBG's fingertips. I'm a magnet, and I'm friends with Matt Pride Dragon, and it's my best friend! Both of those voices were cameos. While Sloane, Pelling, and Terry did most of the voices throughout the series, the magnet is voiced by Thomas Ridgewell, aka YouTuber Tom Scott, whose kill won the Golden Chainsaw in the Dude Bro Party Massacre kill count, although we failed to point him out. Sorry, guy. Tom Scott donated 5,000 pounds to the Don't Hug Me Kickstarter, which earned him an EP credit in episodes three through six and a voice cameo here. Meanwhile, the shovel is voiced by Kellen Goff, a prolific voice actor who's been in several Five Nights at Freddy's projects. As Red Guy tries to fix things, a long arm extends from the shadows to place upon his shoulder. But sorry dude, it's not your friend the yellow guy. It's Roy. It's Roy. No one wants Roy's hand on their shoulder. Red Guy does his old trick of following the cord, and after wondering what will happen when he pulls the giant plug, he fucks around and finds out. It creates a brand new day, literally, with palette swapped versions of the three main characters. They're actually their favorite colors now, as they mentioned in the first episode. Yellow Guy even gets to be green. Hopefully this new sketch pad will be nicer to them as the series starts anew. How many rule-breaking kills did I count in this episode? Let's find Let's out and get do 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 to the numbers. Me. Hey James, I actually had a quick question and oh you're a puppet. Dude, I know! <laughs> Wait, does that make me felt meat? Ew, gross, no! It, uh, bro, whatever, it doesn't matter. It. I was actually working on a new kill count. I didn't authorize that. Hey look, shut up! <gasps> I'm still oh. confused as to sometimes <laughs> what kills count and what kills don't count. Oh, well I can help you with that. Great! With a song! God damn Please don't. There are rules you need to oh, know Christ. when you want to count kills up. <laughs> yes, what rules must <laughs> I know? know? I'll tell you if you'd shut the fuck up. Rule one concerns animals. Like if you should count Pammy's mommy. Yes, her death made my heart Not sad. Fat. Too bad, cause she wasn't human-y. We only oh, count God. humans. <laughs> Not animals or creatures. But didn't you count Bruce the shark? That was mostly a joke, not standard procedure. Oh, wait, 
Wait, Puppet James, James, didn't you just count a butterfly a few minutes ago in this very episode? Yep. Well, doesn't that break your own rules? These rules are for regular episodes. This one is fucking weird! Rule two deals yeah, with wrong. infections, viruses, and becoming zombies. Oh yeah, we count yeah, them we count twice, them right? right? Only if we saw them die previously. <laughs> Which brings us to rule number three. I gotta pee. We don't count unseen backstory deaths. It's gotta backstory be characters is. we know. Get out of here! From a flashback <laughs> of someone we already met. When there's a whole room of kills, that make you scream. Oh my, oh my god. god! The simplest way to count them is to put that work all on Josh. Josh. Oh, come on. Even in the song? One Pretty last much. rule for now. Oh, God. And this one's very important to me. No skin, no soul, no service. service. Never ever skin count soul. a bastard skelly. Bastard. Skelly. Bastard. Skelly. Bastard. Skelly. There we go. Counting rules, but don't feel too encumbered. Just make sure you always finish by saying, Let's get to the numbers. Whew, that one was a doozy. I counted six kills in Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, although maybe I should have counted the aging kills in time, too. Oh, well, whatever. This thing is all messed up. I'm not even sure what to do about a pie chart. Oh yeah, I guess that Whoa. works. Colors are fine. With six episodes across the web series, that left us with an average of one kill per episode. episode. Easy. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Duck. That giant can runs Damn. amok with his guts, which probably yeah. couldn't have smelled too good on set. Don Machete for lamest kill will go to the sketchbook, who bullied the yellow guy so hard it died of exhaustion. And that's it. Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is an incredible web series that released its last episode in 2016. Thankfully, the creators would get to continue the series with a BBC show consisting of another six episodes. If this kill count does well, maybe I'll look at that too. But until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Hey, thanks a lot for- Well, that was fun. <laughs> look how you actually had the puppet there. <laughs> it also just sung a song about the whole time to go kill the count. <laughs> kill the count. I don't know why to do that. Uh, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> so, if he does keep doing stuff like this, I can definitely see him like do like certain video games. Like, come on, you guys know it's Don Gonrompa. I'm thinking uh, Resident Evil. I don't know. Like, I think visual novels can actually count too, since you know, you can actually control it. Digimon Survive, I think, would count. Because, goddamn. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you guys think. Until next time. See ya.